Seamus Dunahoo of Eve University, and this is a $300,000 video. Or more precisely, it's a video about a $300,000 battle, and what that number $300,000 actually means in the context of Eve Online. This video is aimed primarily at new players, prospective players, and total outsiders who have no intention of playing the game whatsoever. Uh, if you are already familiar with how manufacturing works in EVE Online and how pilot's license extensions work in EVE Online, then you already know and understand everything I'm about to cover in today's video. So EVE Online is a game about internet spaceships, and amongst these internet spaceships, uh, play alliances of players can go out into what is called null security space and try to claim sovereignty over some of the solar systems out in null security and rule those sol solar systems like uh, as their own private empire. And then other player alliances will try to come in and uh, take over their space and they get into fights with each other. And so to try and secure their space against outside threats, they'll sometimes make deals and friendships, form coalitions with other player alliances, and these coalitions will sometimes get into huge fights with each other. Sometimes these fights get really huge. Uh, very recently, there was a battle for sovereignty in a solar system that CCP has called uh, B-5R5B. I'm sorry, B-R5RB. And this got to be a really big battle. And as part of the dev blog, if you scroll down, uh, you'll see that it says the economic impact 11 trillion ISK. According to Sumplex conversions, that could equate to approximately 300,000 to 330,000 United States dollars. For players who are not familiar with the relevant mechanics, uh, this number can sometimes cause some confusion about what that actually means. Uh, some people have gotten the mistaken impression that in EVE Online uh, you can pay CCP money to get ships and that dollars become ships. No. This is wrong. That is not how this works. First of all, let's cover some points here. Uh, let me get my notes. Dollars do not become ships. Minerals become ships. So in EVE Online, you take a mining ship out to an asteroid belt, and you go mine some asteroids. You take the asteroid ore back to a station, you refine it into minerals, and then you can use the minerals to go and manufacture ships. Asteroids become minerals, become ships. Dollars do not become ships. Uh, when we start talking about constructing capital ships, the story gets a little bit more complicated, but the fundamental principle remains the same. Minerals become ships. Dollars do not become ships. So let's get, get that clear up front. There is no way to transform dollars or euros directly into ships, not transform. I'm being very careful with my choice of words here. Minerals transform into ships. Dollars and euros do not transform into ships. So let's remember that first of all. Uh, next point, uh, EVE Online has a very robust market system. The in-game currency, which can be obtained, uh, which is only created by in-game activity, is called ISK, or Interstellar Credits. And EVE Online has a very robust market system where almost every single item type in the game can be bought or sold for Interstellar Credits. So if I want to buy a ship from another player for ISK, I can do that on the market. Or if I want to manufacture my own ship and I just want to buy the minerals, uh, I can do that as well. I can look up prices for any of the minerals that are on the market. All right? Everything from tritanium to morphite. Right? Uh, so very robust. Players buy and sell things to each other, in-game items to each other for ISK all the time. Right? So this establishes a conversion between ISK 
and ships. If I want to go buying ships, for example. The next point is that Eve is a subscription-based game. I'll don't worry, I'll explain why that's relevant. So with Eve Online, it's a classic subscription model, and Eve Online still follows a subscription model, uh, even after many other MMOs have gone to the uh, free-to-play model. Basically, you pay $15 a month to CCP for subscription time. Alternately, you can also buy something called a pilot's license extension from CCP. So you give CCP dollars or euros, euros and they'll give you a pilot's license, one or more pilot's license extensions. Each pilot's license extension is good for 30 days of subscription time. You can apply this to your own account if you wish, but usually what is typically done is that once you buy a pilot's license extension from CCP, it's an in-game item. And like any other in-game item, you can trade it to other players for ISK. So now that you've paid CCP your dollars or your euros, you can take this plex and you can sell it on the market to another player, and another player will give you interstellar credits for that. So you get their interstellar credits, they get your plex. Now that they have a plex, they can right-click the plex in their inventory and select apply game time to account and now they have another 30 days of subscription time which technically that you paid for but they gave you interstellar credits for it this is obviously sanctioned by crowd control productions it's built into the game in the sell orders and buy orders in the in-game market so this establishes a ratio between interstellar credits and pilot's license extensions and of course, the CCP account management website is where you can buy uh, pilot's license extensions. So that establishes a ratio between pilot's license extensions and dollars. Right. So basically, dollars can be tr traded to CCP for Plex. This is a one-way conversion. You can put money into the system. You cannot take money out of the system. Not legally, at any rate. The only way to get money out of EVE Online is via various real money transactions, but that's a violation of CCP's rules. If they catch you doing that, uh, they're going to ban your account. Right? So this is not allowed. Right? So dollars to Plex is a one-way conversion. Uh, or rather, a one-way trade. So once you have Plex, you can trade it to other players for ISK. And once you have ISK, you can trade it to other players for ships. But these different things do not transform into each other. You have traded money to CCP for Plex. You are trading Plex with other players for interstellar credits. You are trading interstellar credits with other players for ships. These things do not become each other. They do not transform into each other. They are merely traded for each other. There is a difference here. Again, minerals become ships. Dollars do not become ships. Right. So with these ratios established, you can now talk about a ratio between dollars and ships, but you're going through two intermediate things to get there. So going back to the dev blog for a moment, it's a, a whole lot of ships were destroyed. 75 Titans, uh, 13 super carriers, 370 dreadnoughts, 123 carriers, and a whole bunch of smaller vessels. And each of these each of these things have, with the exception of the Titans and Supercarriers, each of these things have a price on the market. Titans and Supercarriers are a special case. Uh, those have to be uh, transacted between either between trusted uh, business relationships between players or with a trusted middleman. 
uh, because Titans and Super Carriers cannot dock in stations, so they can't be traded on the market directly, but that, that that's a tangent. So each of these ships can be traded for ISK, so that puts an ISK value on each of the ships, but it's not the actual ISK that was destroyed, it's the ships themselves that were destroyed, so it's really a mineral loss. But still, you can calculate a trade value for the ships that were destroyed. So how, many, how much ISK would you have to spend on the market or with business transactions with other players to replace the fleet that, you just, that, that just got destroyed? So 11 trillion ISK, and then you can calculate uh, how many plex uh, for that 11 trillion ISK, and then you can calculate how many dollars or euros for that many plex. That's where this $300,000 number comes from. Again, you can only put money into the system. You cannot take money out of the system. So the only way that this $300,000 number makes sense is if you decided that you, were that you had lost this many ships, so you were going to replace it as follows. You are going to give a huge amount of money to CCP to get a whole bunch of vouchers for extra game subscription time then sell these vouchers for game subscription time to other players for interstellar credits and then use the interstellar credits to buy replacement ships from other players or alliances who had taken the time to mine the minerals where the hell did i put that thing here we go who had taken the time to mine the minerals uh, to mine the asteroids, refine them into minerals, construct capital intermediate components out of them, and then construct capital ships. Or if we're talking about subcapitals, to just mine the asteroids, turn them into minerals, then turn them into subcapital ships. So dollars and plex and isk do not magically make ships appear from out of nowhere. In almost all cases, ships uh, were manufactured by players from minerals from asteroids that were mined, or from reprocessing any loot that they managed to come across. So that's what the $300,000 number means, and hopefully for uh, future reports like this in the future, from the Department of Redundancy Department, so for reports like this in the future, uh, that hopefully establishes the context of what this dollar or euro amount actually means. I'm Seamus Dunahoo of Eve University. Thank you for watching.